Good morning everyone. Welcome back to the English class. In the previous class, we have seen a few exercises from the chapter Mullah Nasruddin. Today we will see the rest of the exercise. The next part is the grammar section and this is about phrases and sentences. Remember, we learned what a phrase is. What is a phrase? A phrase is a group of two or more words or it's a unit of sentence which makes sense, some sense but not complete sense as that of the complete sentence. So here in this exercise, you are given a few phrases and you have to make up sentences using these phrases given here. Let me read the question to you. Use these phrases to make sentences. The meanings are given in brackets. So here a phrase is given along with its meaning. You have to use the phrase given there and you have to make a sentence with it. So let's see the first one. Be a breeze. Be a breeze means extremely easy. Let's see an example sentence, but you can write your own sentence there. So this is a suggestion from me. I am so well prepared that passing the test will be a breeze. So the phrase be a breeze means extremely easy. So here it means I am so well prepared that passing the test will be extremely easy. So let's see one more example. Question number two. The big day. The big day means a very important day. So an example sentence is the big day arrived when we went abroad for the first time. So it means that a very important day arrived when we went abroad for the first time. So similarly you can write your own sentences there and there are six more phrases given there along with their meanings. You have to write your own sentences as a homework. Now let's move on to the next section. It's fill in the blanks with suitable articles. So remember we learned about articles. What do you mean by an article? An article is a word used before a noun to indicate whether or not we are referring to something specific or not. Uh, there are three articles A and and B. And the articles A and an are called the indefinite articles because it can refer to any object, any place or any person in general. Whereas the article the is called the definite article because it is used to indicate to something specific. And that is also used in the case where you are referring to the same thing the second time. For example, my friend has a dog. The dog is called Patty. So here you are referring to the same dog two times. So the second time you are referring to the dog, you have to use the article the before the word dog. To indicate that you are referring to that particular dog named Patty. So we have learned this earlier. I hope you remember this. With this in mind, you have to do the next two sections of exercise. So the next section, section B, fill in the blanks with suitable articles. You can do this as an activity now. Please pause this video, fill in the blanks with the suitable articles and then come back. Hope you are done with that exercise. Now let's see the answers. So. Let me read out the paragraphs to you. My grandmother lives in an old bungalow which has an interesting kitchen garden. In the garden, she grows vegetables like spinach, cabbage and cucumber. She uses the vegetables to make yummy food. She also has a lemon tree and a tomato patch. So I hope you got all the answers correct in this paragraph. Now let's see the next paragraph. It's a beautiful day. My grandmother said, let's sit in the garden. She then asked me about my new class and particularly about a new student in the class. What is the name of the new student who joined yesterday? So I hope you got the answers correct. Now let's see the next one. His name is Prakash, said I. He is the most polite boy in the class. So I hope you got this exercise correct. Now the next one, section C, rewrite this paragraph by inserting the article, the, wherever required. You have to do this as an activity now. Please pause this video, finish the activity and come back. Hope you are done with that activity. Now let's see. Which all places need the definite article the? So let me read out the paragraph to you. 
the lake is a lake in Srinagar. It is one of the most famous tourist spots in Kashmir. The lake is surrounded by many beautiful gardens and parks. On the edge of the lake, you can see beautifully carved wooden house boards. In the middle of the lake, there is an island called Charchinar. You can visit the island on a shikara. Shikaras are boards that are used for transportation and fishing. Dal Lake has many floating gardens. These are known for their pink and white lotus flowers which blossom in the summer months. In winter, the lake remains frozen. So I hope you got this exercise correct. Now let's move on to the next section and it is the speaking exercise. Let me read out the question to you. In the reader, Aunt Ruby wanted a parrot which would talk. Imagine you come across one such parrot. Would you talk to it and if so, what? Work in pairs and role play the conversation. So remember, we learned the story, the parrot wouldn't talk in your English reader. So in that story, Aunt Ruby wanted a parrot who would talk. Similarly, if you get one such parrot, would you have a conversation with it? Would you talk to it? So this speaking exercise is about role play. You have to imagine that you are talking to this parrot and you have to role play. You have to do a role play with that conversation to that parrot. You can do this with your friends or family for the time being and this is going to improve your speaking skills. So let's see the next section of exercise. This is about spellings. Let me read out the question to you. Rearrange the letters to form meaningful words related to fun and laughter. So here you can see six words which have got jumbled letters or the letters are scrambled. You have to unscramble the letters to form meaningful words which are related to fun and laughter. You can do this as an activity now and if needed we can use a dictionary. So please pause the video, finish the activity and come back. Hope you are done with that activity. Now let's see the answers. The first one, the correct word is comical. The second one, amusing. The third one, humorous. Fourth, chuckles. Fifth one, hilarious. And sixth one, playful. I hope you got all the words correct. Let's see the next section. It is the writing exercise and it's about summary writing. And what do you mean by a summary? A summary of a text is a brief restatement of important details. You don't repeat all the information and details. Instead, you have to select and organize the important information or detail so that someone else who is reading it will understand it better. So this exercise is about summary writing and here you have to read the story given and write its summary. So you can see a story is given here. You have to read the story and write the summary in the space provided in the text. So when you write a summary, you have to take care of a few things. The first thing, if you are writing the summary of a story, you have to read the story carefully. And you have to note down the main characters. You have to note down the setting of the story, where the story is taking place. Then you have to identify the story's conflict, what the characters have to overcome. That is the conflict of the story. Then you have to note down the main events in the story and also at the end you have to note down a conclusion. So I hope these guidelines will help you to write the summary effectively. So children, that's all for today. We have come to the end of chapter 6, Mullah Nasruddin. We have also seen the exercise from the chapter. I hope everything is clear to you. So we'll meet in the next class with a new chapter. Till then, bye.